There's now time for news review. We look at uh, the major stories in all the newspapers. The Daily Guide says NPP tipped to win 2020 and farmer attempts murder, suicide. Cop fired over Kumasi Stadium shooting and I gave Maslog S. Uh, I gave S. Maslog boss 50,000. Now, that's according to the driver. Uh, he says he went for 50,000. The back page says four bullets removed from Kotoko fan head and Conte defends Sanchez bet benching. And Moreno explains Ericsson poor form. Basta Sag Velvet, yes. So, uh, well, uh, this one says Pochettino takes over. No, uh, Pochettino that didn't take over. And Cobb interdicted for Kotoko fan shooting. The finder for this morning says TUC on 2020 polls appeals to all stakeholders to cooperate to ensure peaceful elections and first lady charges hairdressers and beauticians to prioritize um, creativity and I took 500,000 from account office for Maslow CEO that's according to the driver and Dr. Friyako to receive Pan-African award. If you get to the Ghanaian Times for this morning EC says we'll go ahead with new voters register and uh, Nigeria's Oni of Ife arrives for official visit on Saturday, and Dr. Wal Jogatia judged overall best ministers in 2019, and $4 million children's library project abandoned. That's according to Child Rights International. And the back page says 897,431 cashew seedlings distributed to 15,555 farmers in Upper West, and Ghana Highways Authority to relay concrete basement structure of Klagong, a Sherman overpass. And finally, the daily graphic for today says, diffuse growing tension over register. New Okwedo owner the Sith tells Peace Council and National Road Safety Authority awaits policy direction on Okada use. It follows 732 deaths last year and ECG wages were on par theft is also here. Now the back page says, <clears throat> Tepa and Nsoko District Hospitals near completion and construction of bridge over Ochi River progresses. So let me introduce my guest for this morning. And uh, to my immediate left is Member of Parliament for Second E and representing the NPP, Andrew Japamesa. And next to him is Al Hassan Sui, who is Member of Parliament for Tamale North and representing the NDC. Good morning and uh, thank you very much for joining us. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. I believe all of you are doing very well. By His grace. Great. So, uh, since uh, by the grace of God you're doing well, let's get into the papers. And of course, um, uh, it's one issue that is never going to die away. Uh, still in the news, very much so in the news. Uh, the Daily Graphic talks about diffuse growing tension over register. That's Neo Kwedona, uh, the Sith telling uh, Peace Council. So he's the president of the Great Accra Regional House of Chiefs. He's asking the Peace Council to step in to ensure that uh, you know, the tensions that are associated with the whole debate is diffused. And the Ghanaian Times also has, um, EC says, we'll go ahead with new voters register. Let me start off with you, um, uh, Andrea Japamesa particularly from the Ghanaian Times perspective, uh, the EC has been uh, advised by some to consult broadly and even consult further. Should this be the position of the EC, telling as well, irrespective of what you say, I am going to go ahead and compile a new voters register. Should that be the position of the electoral commission? Well, good morning. Uh, good morning to Alassane, uh, good friend. Uh, of course, to our church viewers. Um, yes, BAUM is consult, BAUM is engage, uh, but the EC has its own plan. You see, what, what, what we forget, you know, is that if a body mandated by law to carry out a specific function uh, in accordance with its mandate based on advice, uh, in this case, technical advice from his own IT team and external consultants, we are told, intends to execute a certain program, uh, it's important that he informs the stakeholders and try to get their buy-in mm -hmm. as to why it is that the steps that they are taking would inure to the benefit of the larger Ghana. And I believe that that's exactly what the EC has done uh, in their consultations at IPAC, which even though not backed by any law, is the body that has been put in place to uh, be a liaison between the Electoral Commission sure. and the political parties. That is exactly what they did by going to Parliament with their budgetary request for the year hmm. that was discussed initially with the Finance Ministry, subsequently with a Special Budget Committee of Parliament, and, of course, approved 
by the plenary, even though our friends on the other side decided to walk out. Uh, that is exactly what they're doing by informing the general public uh, through various engagements. We're talking about informing the general public. First, uh, I mean, in coming up with this decision, for instance, even at IPAC, it was part of any other business. Two, we know that uh, somewhere in 2015, at the time when uh, you know, the NPP and led my vote count alliance were pushing for a new voters register, the then Electoral Commission set up a five-member committee to solicit views of Ghanaians. And you know, there was a forum, which all the political parties went there and made presentations. And the committee came up with its recommendation. Couldn't this EC have done the same, opening up for a broad-based consultation, as we saw in the past? You see, broad-based consultation means what? Engaging every individual in this country. I didn't say that. I've given but you I've, the I've, That's why I've indicated to you the processes that have gone through or have taken place so far. Is that not broad-based consultation? And I've also I mean, indicated I, to you I, that... I find mm -hmm. a difficulty with the suggestion that because an item is discussed as any other business, that doesn't make it a significant subject for discussion. It doesn't. What's the purpose of AOB on the meeting agenda? The most important item so, is, so, is so, stated, so, so, is stated so, and is no, said, no, no, no. this it cannot is the reason why we're going be into that, a discussion. It cannot be mm -hmm. that it is the most important items that are listed. Because I have served as company secretary for some companies in this country. And I know that important decisions have been taken as AOB. Because it's entirely possible that at the time that the notice went, some information that they were waiting to prepare the minutes or the agenda for the meeting wasn't ready. But at the day of the meeting, those information and whatever it is that they were doing was ready and could be tabled for discussion. The most important thing is that a resolution has been taken and approved. That's all. So let the NDC not try to justify their intransigence, if you like, or uh, uh, this, this dislike for the process by saying that because the item was not listed as a main agenda item and that it was discussed as AOB, that makes it unimportant. I don't get it. But you see, Winston, I, I, I have read the report mm. of the Special Budget Committee. But I have a copy. The EC made the point that, look, over the years, this register, we've had issues with. Our technical, in-house technical IT team and our external consultants. Bear in mind that the AC have told us that their team haven't got uh, uh, requisite capacity to even manage the system that they operate. Have indicated to us, they've provided correspondence from vendors which suggest that, look, this system that we are using to run our election cannot be guaranteed. Okay? And so that is the basis for the need to change the system. People have argued, and indeed, at the committee level, a question was posed to them, why the data on the existing system cannot be migrated onto current system and if even need be for them to validate by asking people to come and verify and take additional information or data or biometric as they indicated they want to use some facial recognition. Why is that not possible? They said that well per their own statement that they issued the last time that that was still being considered. Of course this was December. And so if post that... And we're told that it's possible now. Yes, fine. That's fine. So, so if it's possible, what, what, I mean, what is the justification for a new register? When, when were we told that that was possible? I mean, just uh, yesterday, watching uh, the uh, deputy chairman of the electoral commission, so, he talked about so, it. So, 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 that so, so the point that... And yesterday, we also told the EC will go ahead despite all the agitation. So going ahead means what? To compile a new voters register. Through what means? Through what means? Yes. Through new registrations. Oh, you see, that, let's, let's, let's... That is what the no, story hold on, says. Hold on, I haven't read the Ghanaian Times Yes, Time I have story. read the Ghanaian Times. Fantastic. Yes. But I'm saying that at the Special Budget Committee meeting level, the EC clearly gave an indication that, look, nothing has been firmly decided. Post that, they came to tell us that, look, 
they were going to compile a new voters register. People have advocated that, look, the data that is available can still be used, if it can. And if the EC wants to add additional features, okay, they can still go ahead and ask you to go to the polling station and verify, and then additional features taken. What would that amount to? Let me get to Honorable Suhini for his view on this. Uh, Honorable Suhini, um, the EC yeah. says they'll go ahead anyway, uh, irrespective of agitations. Well, um, good morning to my very good friend, um, Honorable Mercer, and good morning to Winston. Good morning also to our viewers. Permit me to extend my heartfelt condolences to my very hard-working woman organizer, the okay. Tamale North Constituency woman organizer, Juliana Bauer. Uh, Juliana Bauer, who lost uh, the mother uh, yesterday, may her soul rest in perfect peace. Um, the headline and the discussion that we just heard from Honorable Mercer are the reasons I am convinced that the Nanaku Fuado appointed led EC directors in the persons of Madame Jane Mensa and Dr. Bosman Asari are determined to plunge this country into chaos. How? By their intransigence, by <coughs> their close-mindedness to other forms of ensuring that we take decisions that are beneficial to all stakeholders in the electoral process. And I am particularly surprised, especially by Madame Jean Mensa. Why are you surprised? Because of her past positions on matters such as this. When she was with the IEA, she had cause then to advise the Electoral Commission not to be adamant to engaging other political parties and other stakeholders in the electoral process, despite the fact that the law says that it has the mandate to do what it wanted to do. So with a position like that in the past, and with her new rule, one will expect that if she meant those pieces of advice that she gave then, she will apply them. The only thing that seems consistent with her position is that <coughs> it is consistent with the position of the New Patriotic Party. That's the only thing that seems consistent with the position. Because then when she advised the Electoral Commission to engage stakeholders and not <coughs> to, you know, be adamant to the positions that were adopted by other stakeholders, it was because the NPP at the time was calling for a new register and the Electoral Commission was not in agreement with those calls yes, but, I mean, and the, wanted to the proceed. Fact that, the fact that, I mean, in the past, her position was similar to that of the NPP and today she's made a position doesn't mean that her position would, is always the same as the NPP. I didn't, I didn't say that. So I didn't, her, the, her position is consistent with that of the NPP. So I said her position then is inconsistent with her position now. Mm -hmm. But the only thing that is consistent with the two positions is that the first position was a position that coincided with the position of the NPP. And this position that she has taken again, strangely, is another position consistent with the NPP. So I'm saying that her earlier position is inconsistent with her current position. But the only consistency I see is that in both situations, she is consistent with the positions of the new patriotic party. I hope I'm clear. Mm, sure. That's the point I'm making. And so when you hear chiefs, when you hear opinion leaders, when you hear civil society organizations and other political parties call on the electoral commission to disengage or to stop the idea that they want to implement, which is to compile a new voter register, 
those people making those calls are not those who want to destabilize this country. It is the Electoral Commission led by the Nana Kufuado appointed, you know, Jane Mensah and Dr. Bosman Asari, who, by their intransigence, may just, you know, or have become, let me put it that way, a threat to the stability and peace of this country. And we must all, as citizens, speak up so that they can, you know, um, um, see reason and, and take positions that will engender confidence in the electoral process as we inch closer uh, 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 the elections. Look, all the political parties that are against the compilation of a new voter register seem to be saying, because I'm part of that, is convince us why it is that imperative that we compile one now. And as we, say, as we speak, Winston, on another radio station this morning, there's a poll that is being conducted as to whether the interview that the deputy chairperson had on a sister station last night should be played back this morning or not. Why? Because one group of people think it was that embarrassing. And it was, it may cost him his job, so they shouldn't play it back. And others are saying that, why? Let's play it back. That is how, you know, ridiculous people find the reasons being given for the compilation of a new register is. That's how ridiculous people find the reasons. How can the chairman tell us that their data system will crash? Data system crashing. I mean, in this country, maybe he doesn't even know. Ghana has the, the, the largest data system in West Africa. And the, 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 the people with little background in E.T. will tell you that it's unheard of. Hmm. What he's suggesting is unheard of. He said the experts have told him. Completely ignorant position. You know, so it tells you that the intransigence that we are seeing perhaps is goaded by some level of ignorance in what is expected of them at the Electoral Commission. Hmm. Or maybe inexperience to put it lighter. And so if you are not experienced, if you do not understand what is at stake, you can only but be humble to other, you know, suggestions and ideas. Nobody is against an improvement. Nobody will say, if we find it necessary and agreeable, that we should not improve upon our current register. But we are saying that the reasons given for the compilation of a new register are not tenable. They say that, that I mean, the, the, that, the STL wrote to them and told them that their machines, uh, the laptops are, I mean, the BVDs are at end of user life and so should consider changing them. That's why I'm saying nobody is against improvement. Hmm. But we are saying that why is the need now? Why? So why is there the, a so, need so now? What, what if the improvement would come in the form of a new register? You see, we are looking at a number of things. Mm -hmm. We have an existing register. That ex existing register has served us well over the period. In fact, as recently as the district assembly elections, it was used and gave a 99% efficiency, according to the Electoral Commission. 99%. How better can it get? Again, we are talking about the electoral calendar this year. And we are saying, looking at the programs of not just the Electoral Commission, but the other political parties who are key stakeholders. Because if the Electoral Commission conducts elections and parties don't take part, it is not an election. Okay. So we are not just looking at the calendar of the Electoral Commission. We are also looking at the calendar of the other parties mm -hmm. and stakeholders who will be playing roles as far as you know, the whole process is concerned. We are saying that the time does not make sense for us to crash the compilation of a new register. If we have an existing one, that only recently was used and 
the output was about 99%. Okay. Again, we are saying that we have other competing needs as a country. The cost of 400 million Ghana cities, we think at this time, is a waste. Again, when we speak of time and calendar, let's not leave out the Ghanaian citizen. What they are saying is that apart from the queuing that we have already done, and some are still doing, to get the national identification cards, the queuing that later we may have to do this year to register our SIM cards, the queuing that may have to occur in the case of population census, we should go and queue again. But population census, they don't queue, they'll come to your well, house. Well, I'm saying may happen. Mm. Because when they come to your house, you never know what's going to happen. Mm. They come to your house. Yes, but they come to your house and that the time that you will spend mm. with the officers is also time that you can use doing other things. Mm. So I'm saying it is not just the time of the, the political parties. It's not just the time available to the okay. EC. It's also to the time to the citizens. And I'm saying, I'm saying, Finally, listen, yes, I'll just end yes. on that note. I'm saying that, look, when you put the citizens through all this stress, you are saying that we should go back again and queue. When you did that only recently, limited registration, parents who went to the centers with their children who are 10, 18, suffered and wasted time to get them registered. Now you have to get all of them back. And we say, what is the need? And you are not giving us very good reasons why to, we should endure that. Let me get to Honorable Mesa for his reactions. You see, it's important mm. that we do not bastardize institutions that have been taxed to carry out a certain function. Because if you sit here and say that uh, Jean Mesa's position when she was at uh, um, IEA Okay, is inconsistent with her position that she takes today. And that her position that she takes today is in alignment with the NPP. Then and now. Uh, That's the then, of course, uh, we are compelled to go back to Mr. Mahama and what he told us when he was president that we should not interfere with the work of the EC. And that anybody who is raising issues regarding activities of the EC is only doing so because the person is afraid of the outcome of the general election. Correct? Yes. Now, today, what has changed? For Mr. Mahama to be making comments about the EC. NPP advocated for a change of the register in 2016. Charlotte Osse refused. That was your position as well. That the voters register was not necessary. So was she in bed with you at the time? You believe so. That's why you removed But you her. see, that's what I'm saying. Look, Deb, I did not ask no, hold on. she and her deputies was, was to she be bantering in so. public. It wasn't the Japan Mason or the MPP. The petitions and counter-petitions against themselves. That you instigated? Oh, really? Amadou Sule was influenced by the MPP today. Charlotte Osse was influenced by the MPP to say that Amadou Sule was sitting in this office and doing illegal transfers. Unbelievable. You guys know no shame. <laughs> These are matters of fact. I'm sure the reverse is true. Okay? They, was I the one who instigated Charlotte said to complain to the Yoko about their deputies? Was it me? Was it the MPP? What has Tell that me. got to do with No, I'm asking you. Was it the MPP? Who did that? How would I know? What has that got to you do see? with what we are discussing? But that's exactly what led to their removal. We are not discussing why but, So removed. why bring it up? Well, that we removed Charlotte Osei. But you did. That's what you said. Yeah. But you did. I did what? Go ahead. The You're... legal process mm -hmm. that has been laid out by the constitution led to her removal. Ah. Not me. Ah. Okay. Look, this is what the committee was told by the electoral commission when they appeared before them. They said 99% reliability of decision level election. Listen to what the electoral commission said to the special budget committee. District level election. This is a report mm -hmm. of the Committee uh, of Parliament. 9.9 .9 on page 16. The committee at the time of the meeting, on account of the revelations given by the commission, expressed its fear about the smooth running of the upcoming district level election scheduled to take place on December 17, 2019, and wondered how the commission could conduct the election in the light of the challenges of the biometric register 
as earlier stated by the commission. What does but, it mean? But, but this was before the election. Absolutely. So after, I'm saying that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, chairman, please. No, you go ahead. Please, please. What does this mean? What does this mean? What does it mean? That the commission had issues with the register at the time. Yes, but you should the biometric look at after system. the elections. Oh, chairman, I'm coming. Please. So let's go there. Please. I'm I haven't with... finished. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Now, the chairperson assured members of the committee it was not anticipating any major challenge as the commission has subjected the existing biometric register in its current state to intense scrutiny and judged it to be good enough for the conduct of the district level election, especially given the fact that participation in the district level election is often not high. So, what does this mean? That we are only assured of using the system for the district level election because we expect the voter turnout to be low. Same cannot be said of the general election. That's what it means. And so if they go into a district level election that had 30 something percent turnout and they achieved 99 percent of election success, and who says that when anybody says that we're successful at an election was because of only the BVD machines or the electoral system? Who says that that, that is the case? Critical. It's the, it's most, the critical. most critical. But is that the only factor? It's the most critical. Oh, I don't have a problem with it being the most critical. Is that the only factor? Several other factors go into an assessment of an election. Mm -hmm. So then don't let us sit here and delude ourselves into thinking that the electoral commission's only interest is to waste money. And you talk of waste. Today you are the vanguard of the public press. You. Okay. You sat in government in 2012 without a budget. No budget whatsoever. You awarded contracts almost a billion to the RG group. Oh, the PDS, you want us to talk? Oh, you can Let's talk of PDS. Let's move on. Um, what, show on. me the budgetary allocation for PDS. Why can't and which money is that government paid for on, PDS? Hold on, Honorable Mesa, hold on. Okay, so look, you hold see, on. look, no, please, please, please. Winston, I beg you. Yes, I need to get him to also react to the things you've said. What, what, but uh, let me finish. Finish, so that's why I say you need to finish. <laughs> so you see. Because we have other issues let, to talk about. Look, yes. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. I would rather, okay, that we have a credible register going into election 2020 than to say that the electoral commission should do with whatever it is that they have so that when we finish the election and the outcome doesn't go in anybody's favor, we have problems mm -hmm. in this country. Okay, let me get to Honorable Suhini briefly. On so let me get on the high horses. You see, you but, but, see. But, but, but before you get into that, yes. you talked about the fact that yeah. the NPP I wanted to address the data center. Hold on, Charlotte Osai was yeah. uh, in bed with you and that's, and that's why they removed her. Was she? I didn't say that. You said that's what you, they believed. Well, they believed that. Was she? I mean, how would I know? I don't register people in the NDC. I don't know who is a member of the NDC and mm. who isn't. But I'm saying that's what they believed. And they said it repeatedly and before they came into power. you are saying is in bed with the MPP? That's what they said. She's an appointee I didn't of Akufo Ado. I didn't you say that. You sat here and so. That's exactly what you no, said. No, no. You, if you said, if that is your interpretation. Appointed by what does it mean? Mm. Uh, so it does your interpretation. Your interpretation, your interpretation you does not. Don't, don't put. That's your interpretation. Briefly on the, yes. It's, 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 it's Brief your interpretation. But she was appointed by Nana Kufado. And her position then. And her position then. And nobody else. And her position then is inconsistent with her position now. It is only consistent, the, the two positions are only consistent with positions that the MPP have taken. You mm. can do other interpretations on it, and I think any reasonable person will, 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 will get the, the drift. But you see, when he talks about, you know, the EC consultant, then he says, oh, uh, IPAC, AOB. I mean, let's be real. Let's be real. You go to a meeting to discuss critical matter such as the compilation of a new voter register, which, by the way, is the only basis why an election is conducted in the first place. Listen, and you say that during AOB you mentioned it, and so that was a discussion. Was it was a but see, decision taken then? I am not, it, that, there was no decision taken. Absolutely, so what's your problem? Yes, but you see, you, you mentioned, mentioned that the EC has an intention of compiling exactly. a new so, voter register. So let him continue. You say it's not an agenda. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's hold on. a decision taken? Continue, please, please, continue. Please, please, let's, let's, oh. let's, let's, let's proceed. You see, so All you this mentioned, needless tension. and then you come so, out, hold on, hold on, hold on, yeah, hold on. Yes, go ahead. You come out and then you claim that you have engaged the political parties because during any other business, you mentioned that you will do a compilation. But you see, it is even in his own words when he says that um, the EC asks for consulting and engagement, they can go ahead, but they have a plan. What is the purpose of 
consultation and engagement when you have already made up your mind on what to do. But he sees nothing wrong with it. So he says, oh, as for consultant engagement, they can go ahead and consult and engage. But the EC have a plan. Those were my words. Do you get it? So it tells you the mindset. And that is a very dangerous mindset when you are dealing with an issue that involves stakeholders. If you do not keep an open mind and all you do is take a position and want to, by all means, willy-nilly get everybody to support your position without keeping an open mind, then you will be, you know, uh, 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 creating the kind of tension that mm. we are seeing in this country. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I associate myself with the civil society organizations, the opinion leaders, and the moral society that is saying that we do not need that tension as we approach the general elections. Look, we are going to have a population census later this year. And it is from the population census that all other data relating to, you know, population for whatever purpose can best be deduced from. So, for example, the PNC's position, which was same in 2016 and same now, is that, look, let's do the population census in March, as it is suggested. So from the population census, the National Identification Authority and others can, you know, test their data that they are collecting now against the population census and many other sources or if you like indicators from the population census will better equip us to okay. compile a credible register if need be in 2021 2022 okay. so that we will have enough time to test that register with the district assembly elections before the 2024 general elections. How is that difficult to understand? When the current register, as was used for the district assembly elections, can still be used for the general elections of 2020. All right, so we need How to move on to other stories. To um, let's move on to other stories. And uh, the Daily Graphic talks about uh, National Road Safety Authority awaiting a, po a policy direction on um, Okada use from the Ministry of Transportation. It's very important because we're told that, you know, there were 732 deaths last year. And I remember very well, somewhere in uh, 2011, they marched to Parliament at the time protesting. They wanted Parliament to legalize it. And I'm starting off with you, uh, Lawyer Messer, because um, at the time, what people said, for instance, was that if something's an illegality and they've actually marched to Parliament and they've told parliamentarians that this is what they do, all of them should have been arrested. We're back at it, bearing in mind that Deputy Transport Minister has called for a review of that. He says, let's give it a second thought. Based on the kind of deaths we're experiencing, based on concerns by the you know, medical doctors and practitioners, should we be giving it a second thought when it comes to the usage of motorcycles uh, for commercial transportation? Well, before I go there, it's important that I deal with some issues that you raised. Look, that would be your time. Only, Five minutes. I don't have a problem. The yes. only tension mm -hmm. that is being generated in all this discussion is emanating from a free anchor tape and call on the NDC to take arms. He didn't that's, say that. But that's and, essentially yeah. what he said. No, he didn't that's, say that. Oh, he says, please. He says, so I can't paraphrase his words. No, he says, no. I cannot paraphrase. No, no but so you're paraphrasing, your you're paraphrasing oh, to get please, an idea. Please, 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 please. And I listened to, to the tape, arms. not more than not once. I did not, also. Absolutely. And he and said he should take up arms. He says, they've done it before when they were in school. They can bring a crowd to a standstill. Fantastic. By not taking arms. He says they can occupy offices. They literally take guns. Okay. But when you say but take up arms, what does it mean? Tamale. So, so literally, what do you mean? Take up arms. Yes. Why? It's, does exactly. it have a different meaning? Look, take up arms. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. The that's why I said the tension that you claim uh -huh. is because, be, it's because Elvis says we he has made a call on you people to take up arms to, to raise the political tension in this country. Look, Without the CSO's arms. position you is just... never consistent with NBC's position. Man, because I've read Jampo's Prof. Jampo's statement. I've read CDD statement. Mm -hmm. It's not the same as the NDCs. They are only asking that, look, in the light of, in the case of CDD, the census and all that, would this electoral commission convince us that there's sufficient time to conduct a new voters register pre-the election? That's all. So, by, and so, by so if the electoral commission convinces us that they by have... Implication, but, so look, by implication, we help, agree there's no time. We held registers in 2004. Was that an election year or not? It was. We held a registration in 2012. 
Was it an election year or it not? It was. How different is these two years from 2020? Now let's get to the How different are Okada they? issue. I, I want to know. Let's get to the Okada issue. I want issue. to know how 2004 and 2012 are different from 2020. You're not asking me to answer. I don't That's have an why answer. I refer you to the free and create tape. That's where the solution is. That says they'll protest, they'll demonstrate. Protest because of what? Of like the let my vote that they're going let, to put in let, the election let my, let my that they potentially may lose protested. because of whatever it is that they know okay. is so, so let's get to the Okada issue. So let's so, get to the, so let's get to the Okada no, issue. Yes, I, I agree with the call. Mm. I mean that some policy direction ought to be issued. And so mm. if the National uh, uh, Rule Safety Authority has indicated, and I don't know the forum uh, because then again, I haven't read the story. Mm. And so uh, because one would have thought that because they are an agency of the transport ministry, uh, 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 they, they necessarily don't have to make an announcement that that's what they're looking for. They ought to work within the system to get whatever policy direction that uh, they, they think is required on the Okada. But then... Uh, that was through an interview with the Daily Graphic. So, okay. So, uh, so a director of planning and programs was talking to a Daily Graphic. That, that is what they're working on mm. to procure, which, which is not that. And I, I really have an issue with the Okada uh, being legalized. Uh, must be very, very... What are your issues? Do you drive in Accra? I do. They don't regard traffic rules. They don't obey any traffic regulation. But they do in Tamale. They do in Tamale. Yeah. Well, well I've, I mean, I've been to Tamale before. Uh, once the traffic is, I mean, honorable uh, is uh, Once it says I'm, stop, I'm, I'm all not, of them would stop. I'm not in Tamale. And so I can only speak to what I see, mm. which is in Accra in second day. Mm. Correct? Sure. Yeah, so that's the basis for my... And, and, and I, on occasion, have resolved that... When the light is green and you are crossing on red and I hit you, I'm not going to stop. It may not be the best, but it's so nauseating how they disregard traffic rules with wanton abandon. And I am of the school of thought that, look, yes, there are issues with traffic and all that. Okay? And if you relate the number of people who are dying, I'm sure because of lack of obedience of basic traffic rules. Okay? An outright ban. It's, it's what I would It's already illegal. For. Yeah, of course. And, and so the police ought to, of course, motor bikes are uh, 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 not illegal. It's to arrest, I mean. Are not illegal. Yes. Just, how can you confirm that the person sitting behind the motorbike that I'm riding is, is, is engaging me. The police have a way of arresting them. You know, they, I, I, mean, I think that if, if it's, it's important to, that to about it. whatever directives that they, 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 are, they are asking for ought to be expeditiously issued so that we have a clear you know, uh, path to, to follow. Because uh, uh, Okada activities, particularly in Accra, uh, is a no-no for me completely. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me get you on uh, this particular thing because uh, the Columbia Teaching Hospital has talked about the fact that uh, many of the accidents that they had around the festive season, majority of them were uh, motorbike related. And um, so they're actually advocating uh, that we take a second look at this and we ensure that, uh, you know, we're, we're very careful because if we allow them to continue like that, uh, we'll be losing a lot more lives. Yeah, I, uh, I, I will comment on that, but I... Uh I'm sure you will indulge me as I also uh, yes, share you know, my five time. Five minutes that I'm giving. Yes. Um, in his conclusion, he made the point that we are, you know, uh, against the old. I mean, the new register because of whatever is in the uh, old register. You see, if there was anything in that old register that was meant to favour the NDC, they wouldn't have won the 2016 general elections by over one million votes, unless. Of course, they do not believe in the victory that they had in 2016. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I find consistent, maybe the reverse question, uh, you know, points to that consistency that I see in the MPP. Remember the biometric register that we currently have was mm -hmm. also through agitations by the MPP. They agitated for the compilation of the voter register in 2012, even when the NDC was in power and was adamant to their request for a biometric register. But because we put the peace of this country first, and because we wanted all stakeholders to be at peace, in the end, the NDC yielded to the compilation of a biometric register in 2012 at the request of the NPP. And perhaps they did not succeed in putting whatever they wanted to put 
in that register. And so immediately after the compilation of that biometric register, they started agitating for a compilation of a new register. And even made promises. So the electoral commissioner gave us a and even, register and even made that was completely different from and, the one that and, was submitted and at please, the election's petition. Please, please. And even to... made promises that they were going to <laughs> remove the head of the electoral commission and go ahead to compile a new register. And so when they are in power and, you know, uh, by the U.S. State Department's own report, mysteriously have removed the head of the EC and the second item is a compilation of a new register, then you can be forgiven to think that perhaps there is really an agenda to put something in a new register. But that is not even why we are opposed to this register. We are opposed to this register based on the reasons that we have already given about time, about cost, and about inconvenience, and about the, the fact that the EC has not convinced us that the current register cannot be used for the 2020 general elections. On the Okada matter, I have a completely different position, mm -hmm. you know, from the position that my honorable colleague, uh, you know, puts across, you know, uh, what this is morning. That position? My position is that, look, the fact that, you know, uh, 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 unruly drivers of cars skip the red light every now and then does not mean driving should be made illegal. It doesn't, it doesn't mean driving should be made illegal. So if you have motorbike riders or Okada users as we call them, some of them not obeying traffic lights and being in discipline on our roads, it is not enough reason why you should ban it. I think that it is rather an indication that if you regulated it better, the laws will deal with those indisciplined ones amongst them. Just like the laws are meant for users of cars so if I change who are indisciplined. So if I change my position based on your advocacy now, what are you going to say? You'll be very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> And so, and so, and so, and so, have you changed oh, your position oh, based on this advocacy? Yes, he's considering it. I'm sure he will not change his if, position. If Jibesa changes his position, <laughs> eh, that will be a problem for him. Let's go on. Okay, let's go on. You know, so, 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 the, 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 I think that over the, over the period, in fact, I, even when I was on radio, advocated so many times for us to take a second look at that law banning the use of Okada. I do not think that it is sustainable. You don't just, you know, uh, promulgate a law when its implementation clearly cannot be done. Because even those, I've seen police officers on Okada every now and then, mm. and it is convenient. I hope and the law I, is supposed I, to I, make I, life I only convenient. I pray that you had remembered this when we were debating the... Referendum question. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring that matter. I should see, bring that matter. You see, you see, it is convenient. Uh -huh. Do you understand? It's convenient. And yes, the accidents are worrying. In fact, only last uh, weekend, I was having a conversation with uh, uh, a brother's wife who had just returned. I mean, they returned from the U.S. for holidays. But she's from Ethiopia. And... The, we were having the same discussion. She's a doctor, and she also says she will not ride a motorbike. I mean, she was in Tamale with, to visit the family and all of that. And one of the brothers attempted to pick her on a motorbike, and she resisted. And she says, because she's seen cases, even abroad, where people have had very serious injuries because of motorbikes. And so because of that, she doesn't want to use it. So I'm saying the accidents are worrying. But I believe that in our part... Regulation can even reduce the accidents that we see. If you have, you know, people wearing the proper gadgets that you have to wear when you ride a motorbike, like your helmets and the other, you know, mm -hmm. gloves and others that are required in riding a motorbike, and it's all part of the law, I think we will regulate it better. Instead of this, you know, uh, 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 ostrich attitude of banning it when, <laughs> okay. you know, well, uh, it's, the it's, referendum it's, it's, question it's, comes to mind so vividly. Uh, on, no, on, I mean, on that note, we, need to, on, on <laughs> we need to end it. Uh, we, you know, but I was in uh, Tamale. When I was uh, in Tamale, they respected. Uh, yeah, yes, I agree with you. Majority of uh, Okada I mean, users, users, majority of Tamale, they, they, they respect traffic. Yeah, they respect the traffic. You see how we pick and choose of them. Yeah. All right, on that note, thank you very much, Hassan, Member of Parliament for you know Tamale North, and thank you very much. But I'm happy I've won you back on the Okada. Andrew Japamesa, thank you, thank you very much.
is a <laughs> member of parliament for uh, second year. And now we're all on a news review here on uh, TV3 New Day.